All right, so I need to talk to you about food. And more importantly, I need to talk to you about your relationship with food and how it needs to change. But I want you to first think back to your last social gathering. And maybe it was a, a birthday party or a wedding. Uh, maybe it was a festival or something like that. And what's the common between all these? Food, right? We celebrate with food. Food's the second most intimate thing that we do together as a human culture, yet food's become our biggest killer. It's right underneath our nose. We don't even realize what's happening. You know, and, and I've studied all kind of farming. I've studied conventional. I've studied organic. I've studied biodynamic. I've studied hydroponic, aeroponics, aquaponics. I've studied organoponics, raised bed gardening, uh, no-till, container gardening, square foot gardening, all of them, you know, and I'm able to grab something and learn from all those, good or bad in some cases, but I'm able to take something away, but one thing that I've realized is they're not going to save us from this dead end that we're headed down, but there is one thing that we can do to change that, and it's local, localizing our food, and you have to look to the depths of local, you can't just say, yeah, I go to a local restaurant, and they buy from the local farm, just because it's a local farm doesn't mean they're doing the right thing. You know, you have to look at how they're treating their animals. You have to look how they're treating the soil. You know, if they're bringing their inputs in across the country, is it still a local farm? Are they still considered local? You know, and this, this, this problem I have, you know, and, um, you know, the, the thing about plants is they love to grow in dead plants. And you look at the forest, the perfect example, and Rudolf Steiner said it best. He's the father of biodynamic agriculture and the founder of the Waldorf schools. And he says that if you have to bring outside inputs into your farm, that your farm is sick. And he recognized the farm as an individual, as a living organism. You know, and this kind of hits home with me because we set the boundaries on what we identify as someone or something. You know, when you look up at me, I'm not a single organism. I'm a community of organisms. I have 10 trillion on the inside and 100 trillion plus on the outside, and that's debatable on the time of the day and how hard I've worked. So when you, once you become conscious of these issues that we're having with our food, you know, and I don't, I don't know anybody today that's not touched by cancer. And growing up, I'd never heard of autism, and now the prevalence is 1 in 68 births autistic. You know, and I'm convinced that this is related to food, and we have to make a change. And all of it can, can change it just by starting to grow something and changing our relationship with food, you know. And, and once, you're, once you're conscious of all these issues and the problems that we're having, it becomes now hard to socialize and go out and be with other human beings in this type of activity without wondering and questioning the food. Where, how'd you source this? Where'd it come from? Is it organic? You know, and try being a parent. You ever been to a kid's birthday party? You know, they're all pretty typical. You know, they start off and you got candy and sweet snacks everywhere. Then out comes the chips and you got every type of Cheeto, Frito, Dorito. And then it's going to come the main course and it's going to be hot dogs and macaroni and cheese. Followed by a pinata with more candy. And then you're going to get the dessert and it's going to be cake or cupcake with rainbow frosting. You know, and you, and you cringe every bite that your kid takes, but you don't dare say anything. You know, if you, if you say something, then you look like you're trying to stop your kid from having a good time. Or if you pull them aside and you try and reason with them for this reckless eating that they're doing and you, and you say something, then it's going to turn into an argument and you can't do anything, you know? So you just kind of let it be. And the one way I'm able to overcome it is, you know, through love. I know all that that food was brought to us and prepared with love for that consideration for that child. And love overcomes all, right? Yeah, it's a, emotional more than scientific, no doubt, but it helps me get through these things. You know, and to the parent's defense, how hard is it to go to the store? Everything is labeled healthy. Everything's natural, right? And what's the best? Is, is free-range the best? Is cage-free the best? Raised without hormones? Raised without antibiotics? Pasture-raised? Grass-fed? It's confusing. You know, these are tough times to live in. And which store do you go to? Everybody is fighting for the highest quality standards and saying that they're the best. You know, you have Whole Foods. You have Trader Joe's. You have Publix. You have the fresh market, the green market, the farmer's market. You know, and I love them all. I do. And it's difficult to make a decision, but you have to, you know. And the one thing that I know would make a change, the one thing that will cha change everything is right in our backyards. It's all around us. We need to change our relationship with food. We have to surround ourselves with food, you know. And, and the sad thing is, is we are all paying for plants multiple times over. Think about this for a second. You have, if you live in a house, 
you're paying for plants and landscape, right? If you live in an apartment or condo, your, your rent, your lease, your association fees are going to pay for plants. If you're in school, your tuition, there's a budget, a line item, paying for plants. Your tax-paying dollars are going and paying for plants. We're just buying the wrong kind of plants. You know, if anybody's looking down on us right now, they're saying, hey, get a load of these guys. They have all the opportunity in the world to grow their own food, but yet they choose not to. They choose to have somebody halfway across the world sometimes grow their food who doesn't even know them, doesn't care about them, and they, they're using resources that they don't have to ship that food, to get it to the table. These guys are writing checks with dinosaur blood. They're going to be extinct. And this is our culture. This is where we're headed. And we need to make a change. Our food's been taken from us. Food has been turned into a prostitute. Think about this. You have, we dress it up, we make it look nice, and it's for one event, and it's hollow and meaningless often, right? And the farmer's the pimp. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't know you. He doesn't care if the food made you healthy. He doesn't care if you like the way it tastes. He doesn't care who or what he had to exploit to get it to you. He just wants his money. And this is what we've created. And the kids have no idea where food comes from. Believe me, I asked them. I asked them. And they all think it comes from the grocery store. And, and, and this is sad. I saw this thing. It came across Instagram the other day, and it made me laugh at first, but then I started to get burned up about it. It said, another day's gone by that I hadn't used algebra. And, you know, it's, it's funny, and it's so true, but sad at the same time because we force-feed our kids this, this math, right? You have to know this math to get out of school, but there's nothing that says you have to know how to plant a broccoli seed. Nowhere does it say you have to know about recycling food waste and composting. And hell, half the population doesn't even know that you don't need a rooster to get an egg from a hen. This is sad. We're disconnected from this. We have no touch with our food system anymore. If you look back, and if this was 100 years ago, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now because everything was organic, and 70% of us grew something and had a garden. Going back 300 years ago, 90% of us were farmers. We're supposed to grow our food. It's the most important part of our food. We have entire television show networks surrounding the preparing of food, and I love it. It's beautiful. It's artistic. I love chefs. I love the creativity. But gardening and farming is creative. Why not start looking at these? I want to see, uh, along with America's top chef, I want to see America's top farmer. I want, to see, I want to see how creative and beautiful and high quality and sustainable these farmers are. We've got to change our relationship with food. Can you imagine coming home to your subdivision and instead of 2,000 begonias, something that's going to give you nothing, these flowers, you have 2,000 basil plants, and you pull some from different varieties and you have uh, some some lime basil, you have Italian basil and some purple basils, and they offer textures and colors. And every time you go through the gates to your house, the aromatherapy is going to put an instant smile on your face. And at the end of it all, when you pull the plants, everybody gets pesto. I mean, am I out of my mind? Is that crazy? You know, and, and how, about, <laughs> how about walking down the street... How about walking down the street and, and instead of along our pathways, instead of having some worthless ficus or ilex or viburnum, you have a, a hedge of collard greens. You got a superfood growing in the streets. You know, if we had food growing in the streets, I bet we would not have people in the streets begging for food. Our food system's been taken from us. We need to take it back. It's our food. We need to make growing food beautiful and sexy again. I have something I want to show you guys. Well, ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Ain't no grave hold my body down. Hear that trumpet sound. You're gonna get up out the ground. Ain't no grave hold my body down. Well, ain't no
So this is what I'm talking about. I challenge everybody to make a beautiful vegetable garden. We need to surround ourselves with our food. You know, and, and why can't we have chickens in our backyards? A chicken is such a sweet animal. And you were allowed to have a parrot. You can have a parrot. And it squawks very loud. can be dangerous. Take off a finger. But yet we can't have a chicken, right? Something that's sweet. And, you know, I say, they say, oh, well, parrot's companionship, right? Well, if you've never raised a chicken from a baby chick, they're, they're like a little cat. And they might even sit in your lap and they like to have their back scratched and they might even come when you call them. And at the end of every day, they're going to give you an egg. One of the world's most perfect proteins is going to be free for just being their friend. But yet it's illegal. We can't have them in the city. This needs to change. We need to change our relationship with food. We got it all wrong. You know, and when we go to the park, when I go to the park, instead of uh, ornamental shade trees, you know what I want to see? I want to see orchard fruits. I want to see something for every season. And around harvest time, I want to invite the whole community out to harvest and share it and have it be free. Our food system is skewed. You know, you, any day of the week you can go to a fast food restaurant and for under five bucks you can get a burger, fries, and a Coke. But yeah, you go to the market and you want to get a tomato. Tomatoes are, are four bucks a pound, and a beef steak is going to be about a pound and a quarter, so you can have one tomato, or you can have a combo meal. Of course, of course, no wonder. This is our culture. we got to change this, guys. Food should be almost free. The vegetables that we grow should be almost free. we got to take our food system back. That's your new health care. That's the solving of our petroleum crisis. That's our water shortage. We need to change our relationship with food. Everybody needs to grow something. It's your job. Thank you.